Hi, my little babies. Welcome back to another episode of What the Smart Book Reviews. Cleavage. Hi, um, my name is Candace. Thank you for joining me for another episode of What the Smart Book Reviews. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, hi. I already said this. My name is Candace, but I'll say it again. My name is Candace. <laughs> um, if you're not new here, hi, my baby bitches. Um, thank you for joining me for another episode. In today's video, we are going to try and um, thrust our way through. <laughs> you like what I did there? Um, we're going to try and thrust our way through um, the review for the last, <laughs> dear, the last final book. I think this is what, book six? Cage. Declan now no four is this only book four no that can't be right I can't remember anyway this is the last and final book in JT Geisinger's Queens and Monsters series and it is called Brutal Vows oh. um Sorry, I, I'm back to doing the creepy tongue thing. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I did that. Um, and it's funny because I don't... Listen, I don't know why blondies, when it comes to men, get such a bad rap. I don't find blonde guys unattractive. There are, blonde, there are hot, guys, hot blondies out there. However, this guy's not one of them. I did not find this cover model... Um, I mean, he's not unattractive by any means because look, look at him, but, um, I've seen him in other pictures and he, he's not, he's not ugly at all, obviously, but he just doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't jump out for me. You know what I mean? Um, but to each, to each his own, I'm sure there are people out there that love him, but Spider, on the other hand, the character that he's supposed to embody. As you can see in my thumbnail, I was like, oh God, Lord Jesus, please. Lord Jesus. Um, because that man, that man could get it. That man could get it. And he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even have to ask. I would just give it to him. I would, I would throw it at him. The whole thing. Just throw it. Like a softball pitch. I will throw it at you. Okay. Um, so yeah. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down Brutal Vows by J.T. Geisinger. Let's give you the deets for the book. We'll read the blurb. And then we'll, we'll, we'll give you a nice little overview. And we're going to try and keep it short. I say that in every video. It turns out being an hour. We'll see what, we'll see what happens. Let's just, let's just go with it and see what happens. Time travel to the future. <laughs> Two hours later. Can insert that SpongeBob meme. I'm not going to do that, but in your brain, do it. Two hours later. Okay. So, um, this book and all the books in this series are free to read with Kindle Unlimited. If you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription, this book and all the books in the series are free to read. <sighs> There's literally nothing stopping you. Do it. You will not regret it. It's one of the best mafia series is, 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 that I've that I've read in a hot minute. Okay, it's one of my favorites. Um, if you want to purchase this book for your Kindle, it's four ninety nine. If you want to own this hunka hunka burn and love <laughs> in trade paperback that I'm holding in my hand right here, you can get him for fifteen ninety nine right now. This book is also available in audio. The main male character is narrated by Troy Duran, who is the narrator for the entire Queens and Monsters series. Troy Duran is one of the best, oh God, the best narrators in the romance game right now, okay? Especially when he puts on, like, I, I think he's, I, 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 keep in mind, I've done absolutely no research. I don't know this man, period. I know nothing about him. I haven't even visited his Instagram page. When he does the Irish accent, oh, God, 
heat, it's panty melting. He's so hot. So hot. And considering that the majority of this series is Irish Mafia. <laughs> delish. Okay. Um, now, let's get right down to it because you know I'm going to do it. If I, if I bought the trade paperback, you know that I'm going to do it. So, according to, according to Amazon, 392 pages, according to my, my book, 376 pages. I feel like at this point, I feel like, I feel like at this point, it's just like a running joke. Like, I don't do it. I don't, I don't do this little shtick, this little bit to get anything out of it. I automatically know there's going to be a page discrepancy. I just do it for for the laugh now. I just do it as a joke. So, <laughs> let's read the blurb, shall we? Um, okay. The two main characters for this book are Reyna and Spider, obviously. If you have read the previous books, you know who Spider is. If you have not read the previous books, go back and read the previous books. Do not, and I repeat, do not read this book as a standalone. I don't care what anyone says, what anyone else says. I don't even care what JT says. No. This is the last book in a series. You read the series in order. Do not read this book as a standalone. Is it a character standalone where it's about a couple that has their own story? Yes. Does it tie in with a shit ton of other books? Yes. AKA, there will be a crap ton of characters in here that you won't know, and they will be referencing a crap ton of scenarios that you will be completely lost on if you read this book by itself. Don't do it. Okay, I've spoke my piece. Now, let's, t let's do the blurb. So the first bit of the blurb is from Raina's point of view. Okay. If this arrogant Irish mobster my brother is trying to sell my innocent niece to thinks I'm going to play nice over this whole arranged marriage BS they've concocted, he should think again. I don't care if this match with the mob will make Gianni Capo of the five families and permanently secure our place among the Italian crime syndicate of New York. I don't care how much money, territory, or power it will gain us. I especially don't care that the Irishman is the most handsome man I've ever seen. I won't allow my 18-year-old niece to be sold into slavery the same way I was. But if she is, I'll remedy the situation. There's a damn good reason people call me the Black Widow. Okay. Next POV is from Spider. I'm supposed to marry Lily, sweet, naive Lily, who will make a fine wife. A wife who won't distract me, which is exactly what I want. So why can't I stop thinking about her lethal, lovely aunt? Raina, who hates me. Raina, who challenges me. Raina, with the guts of a Viking, the body of a fertility goddess, and the attitude of a feral cat. The sooner this wedding is over and I can move back to Boston with my new wife, the better. Because nothing can come of what I'm feeling for a woman who's not the one in the wedding contract I signed. A woman who killed her own husband in cold blood. A woman I want so much, I think I might just be reckless enough to start a mafia war over. <laughs> okay, creepy tongue thing again. Okay, sorry. Um, here we go. All right, here we go. Um, the first thing I appreciated about this book Raina, the main female character, is not some, some doe-eyed virgin mafia bride, right? She's 33. She's a widow. She is, she is the embodiment of vengeance herself. Like, she is the ballsiest, most brash, forward-thinking, forward-speaking. Oh my God, just, just, she's, 
she's who I want to be when I grow up, right? She's an amazing character to have been written. And she challenges Spider at every turn. And she's such a strong character, a strong female character. This is the character that every other female character should be based off of. Like when, when other authors say that they want to write a badass female character, this is who we're talking about. This is what we want to read. Because Raina is a badass female character. She does not take shit from nobody. She is a boss bitch. Okay. Um, Raina is the sister of Gianni. Gianni is the head of one of the five reigning Italian mafia families of New York. They're getting ready to make the next, the vote for the next capo of the crime syndicate for, for New York. Who's going to lead their organization, basically? All five families. Who's going to lead all five families? Gianni thinks that by making a, a deal or a union of some kind with the mob with the Irish, that it will ensure that that vote becomes him. So what does he do? He offers up his daughter, his 18 year old daughter, Lily, as a, a prize to Declan, the head of the Irish mob in Boston, and says, do, do you have anyone that would want to marry her so that we can make ties between our two organizations. Strength and ties, we'll do a marriage contract and we'll, we'll join our two organizations. And the other four families will see it as such a strong business move that of course they'll make me capo, right? Things don't go according to plan. Declan, D obviously can't do it himself because he's married to Sloan. He loves Sloan. We, we love Sloan. That little vegetarian bitch. Um, <laughs> that little twig eating bitch. Uh, so Spider coming fresh off of Spider, who is the main male character, whose real name is Homer. Homer Quinn. No one calls him Homer. In this book, Raina calls him Quinn throughout the entire book, which thank God, because if she had referred to him as Homer at any point, I probably would have been like, mm -mm, no, I'm sorry, I can't do this. <laughs> um, Spider is Declan's second in command. He's not a blood relation to Declan, but he is in such a position of power within the mob that it's acceptable for Gianni to make this alliance. And so Spider comes out to negotiate the marriage contract between himself and Lily. He comes out to do that with Gianni. Raina finds out about this. Raina is, as I said, Gianni's sister. She's livid. Raina is a widow. Her first husband, Enzo, died of cardiac or sudden cardiac arrest everyone suspects but cannot prove that she murdered her husband what most people don't know oh let me take that back the there are certain people within the other four families like the higher ups the heads of the four families that were privy to the information of what Enzo, her husband, was doing to her throughout their marriage. But at, no one else knows that he was very physically abusive. He was a sadistic fuck. He would consistently take an actual whip to her back. 
So she's literally covered in scars. And she survived, I want to say it was like, what, 18 years of that? Before finally, she basically offed him. Enzo was a diabetic. He had to have insulin shots, like, every day. And, and, um, one day she just replaced his insulin with epinephrine, which is naturally occurring in the body and not thought to be checked for on an autopsy. But in the, in high enough dosages, it can kill you. So, bing, bang, boom, Enzo's dead. Okay, cool. Um, she got her revenge. She also inherited a shit ton of money from Enzo. We're talking like $280 million type money. So Spider has come out to the house to negotiate this contract. And she's pissed off. She goes to Gianni. What the fuck are you doing? But she can't talk him out of it. So she meets Spider immediate sexual chemistry from both of them obviously <laughs> obviously um lily on the other hand um is not a virgin as she should be she has been fucking around with the son of the pool pool cleaner so essentially she's been porking the pool boy um it's like a it's like a cliche in itself <laughs> Uh, so she's devastated because she's in love with this guy, Juan Pablo, who's the son of this Mexican pool cleaner. Um, so Reina is like, I'm sorry, but this is the way it is in the Cosa Nostra. You don't have a choice. You're a woman. They don't listen to women. They don't give us any respect. We're a commodity to be traded for money and incentives and ties and whatever. So she, Reina, ha hates Spider from the jump. She is attracted to him, but she talks to him and treats him like garbage. Their barbs to each other, and especially her barbs to him, are like rapid fire missiles. She is the spiciest bitch. <laughs> She's the spiciest bitch. It's, it's insane. So they negotiate the contract. They sign the contract. All of a sudden, there's a break in at the house. These military style guys come storming in appears to be a kidnapping attempt they seem to be going after lily they all luckily reyna who knows how to handle a gun takes out several of the men spider takes out several of the men because he's there and gianni gets lily to a safe room a panic room or whatever and they kill every they kill all the guys right None of the guys, according to Gianni later, none of the guys can be ID'd. They don't have, their fingerprints don't come up in any database. Their name, there's, there's no identification on any of them. Like their DNA doesn't come up in anything. They're, they're ghosts, essentially. So they can't find out. Declan can't figure out. Nobody can figure out who hired these guys to come take Lily. But because of this, they move up the date of the wedding. We're, we're moving it up by, it's, it's happening next week. We're flying, out, we're flying out to Boston to get married. So L Lily's obviously even more devastated now. And Rain is more pissed, but resigned. So the day of the wedding comes and they're, they're getting ready and all of a sudden Juan Pablo shows up 
and he gets caught by Gianni in the room with Lily. And Gianni pulls a gun on him and threatens to shoot him. Reyna walks in and is like, no, 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 no. Stop. You can't. Please don't do this, Gianni. Don't do this. Lily begs for Juan Pablo's life. You can't murder him. He's the father of my child. I'm pregnant. Gianni turns the gun on his own daughter. You let this trash, you you fucked this trash, you're a whore. You're no, you're no good to me now. Now you both gotta die. Reyna steps in front of the gun. Stop. You can't do this. We'll figure out another way. She has to make a snap decision. So what does she do? She offers herself up in replacement for Lily. Now, keep in mind, Reyna is vehemently opposed to marriage after what happened with her first husband. She has a tattoo on her finger that says never again on her ring finger where her wedding ring used to be. She vowed never to remarry. Well, we, you got to do what you got to do. You, you're saving your niece that you basically raised like a daughter your, her whole life. So here it comes the bride starts playing. Spider's waiting at the altar. But the wrong woman walks down the aisle in, a, in the wedding dress. And he's shocked. He's in awe because she's beautiful. And he's got a boner from here to next Tuesday because she's gorgeous. And he's turned on. And secretly, this is what he wanted. He's been just as miserable as Lily has up to this point. He didn't want to marry Lily. He was marrying Lily to forget about Riley. If you remember what happened with Riley. If you don't remember because you haven't read it, then you shouldn't be here. <laughs> you shouldn't be here. These are all spoilers. So she gets to the end of the aisle and he's like, what are you doing here, Viper? That's his nickname for her. He calls her Viper because she has a Viper's tongue. And she's like, uh, obviously I'm here to marry you because you need a wife. And he's like, he looks to the priest and he's like, you, you gotta give us a minute. And he walks back to the back, to the, to the room where Juan Pablo and Lily are. And he's like, explain. So Raina tells him the truth of everything that's happening and, or everything that has happened. And he looks at Juan Pablo and he says, do you love her? Are you in love with her? And Juan Pablo is like, yes, I'm in love with her. And he's very aggressive, Juan Pablo. He's standing up for Lily like, like a man should like he's very like a whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen if i get if i get killed i get killed but this is my woman and i love her and I, i'm gonna protect her like he's he's being very alpha yes i love her i want her i want to marry her you know i, I, I want this baby and spider looks at lily and he's like you love him. You want to be with him. And she's crying and she's, yes, yes, I want to be with him. And he's like, okay, go. And Gianni is there and he's cursing up a storm. And Spider is not like Gianni from the beginning. He can barely tolerate him. So by this time, he just not, he just knocks him one in the face. And now he's bleeding and cursing up a storm. And he's he's looks at Lily and says, if you go with this boy, you're cut off. You're not my daughter anymore. 
you'll never see another cent from me. You'll, you'll never get another a, a dime from me. And Juan Pablo looks at him and goes, she doesn't need your money. She has my money or she'll have, she'll have my money. And Gianni scoffs at him like, what money? You're, you, there's a lot of money in the pool cleaning business, ha ha ha. And he's like, no, but there is a lot of money in the drug trafficking business. And he says his uncle is some big leader of a giant fucking Mexican cartel. And when he says that, like all eyes in the room are just like, oh fuck. So now Juan Pablo is gonna go back and tell his uncle about the woman, Reina, who stepped in and saved his life and the life of his soon-to-be wife and ch an unborn child. And that uncle is going to only really want to make alliances and deals with said woman. Okay, so... Um, Spider accepts the terms and they get married. And he sets the, the deal as if I marry you and I let I let Lily out of the contract and I take you instead. The caveat is that immediately after the wedding, I get to take you back to the hotel and I get to fuck you. And she's just like, <sighs> and he's, he is like, with the, with the dirty talk, look at all the floaties from my t tissue. He's with the dirty talk. He is going in and I'm si like, I'm sitting there like, Oh God. Okay. Like, whew, whew. because he, he's being very upfront about what he wants and she's, She's like, okay, okay. She doesn't, she, she doesn't think she has a choice. So, the, so they get married. They skip the reception. He takes her back to the Ritz-Carlton. And that is what begins an eight, cha eight chapters of their first night together. Eight chapters. Granted, it's not all sex. There's a there's a, a good bit of talking in in the midst of the sex, but it there's a lot of sex. A, di a lot of different sex. <laughs> okay, so eight chapters. They over the course of this part of the book, they become very close to each other. They tell each other a lot of secrets. They reveal a lot of things about themselves. They get a call from Declan. The other, the heads of the other four families want to have a meeting. Okay, where's Gianni? They don't know, they can't find him. But they don't want to meet with Gianni, they want to meet with you, Reina. Shit. Okay. Let's go. So they go. And they, the other four heads basically say that uh, they're basically like, we, we have begun to distrust Gianni. And we think that he's doing some shady shit behind our back. And she plays it very cool. She doesn't reveal anything. She doesn't appear to be disloyal to her brother, but she also doesn't defend him in any way. She's like, mm, that's interesting. Why, what does that have to do with me? Why am I here? And she can tell that the reason she's been called in is some kind of test. She just doesn't know for what. So after this meeting, they leave. And 
through this next portion of the book. Like they, her and Spider have like their little on and off tiffs about stuff. Um, he eventually tells her what happened to his family. Um, and why he feels so overprotective of her. He feels like he has, by marrying her, that he's put her in danger. Um, in some kind of danger. Because when he was 19, he fell in love with a married woman. And regardless of the fact that she turned him down at first, he pursued her relentlessly until she gave in. And they ended up having an affair together. And her husband found out. And it turned out her husband was a big time, uh, I can't remember if he was a big time mafia guy or a big time drug guy, but he had a lot of connections and he was a ruthless piece of shit. And in retaliation for sleeping with his wife, he systematically murdered every member of Spider's family, not just his immediate family, but his entire family, his like line, his, his starting with his parents, his little sister, his older sister and husband and their children, his aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents. He literally systematically wiped out his entire lineage. And all of that weight has been on Spider, that guilt of that has been on Spider's shoulders his entire life. He got revenge against that man and killed him. But that weight of that has been on his shoulders his whole life. And so he, he feels that like by marrying her, that he's put her in danger in some kind of danger because up to this point, they still don't know who the men that broke into the house looking for Lily, who they were working for. So in the back of his mind, he's thinking, could this somehow be tied to that? Is it something to do with me? Like what, what, you know what I mean? So that comes to light. But that just makes her feel closer to him. It's it's at this point that Raina realizes that they never saw at, that she never signed the, a marriage certificate, or that she never signed a marriage license. That Gianni and Spider negotiated a contract, and they signed it, but she never actually signed a marriage license when they got married. So technically until that's signed and filed with the county clerk, she's not married to him and the contract is technically just paper, it's void. When she tells him this, he, he gets really upset. And Spider is very, for all of his machismo, Spider is very insecure. He's very, um, he, he's, he feels very less than, and he, he doesn't feel like he's worthy of love. So when, when that, comes to light, he thinks that she'll leave him. She doesn't. She goes to Declan and she says, I've reviewed the contract. I want these things changed. She, she says, a bunch of these clauses are coming out. You're gonna change these things. We, we're gonna renegotiate some of these items here and she, she makes a bunch of shit ton of changes to renegotiate the contract for better terms for her family. 
And, and then she says, okay, good. But she doesn't say that she's going to, to leave him. And he's overjoyed. He's elated that she wants to still be with him. During, the, during this meeting with Declan, this is after he has called, he's called them over because he has information about Lily's kidnappers. He, call, he calls them over and he shows them video of the men that broke into their home prior to them actually attempting the break in. It shows video feed of them loading into the white van that carried them to the house. In the background of the, of the video feed, they're coming out of a building that's owned by the Caruso family, which is Raina's family. Afterwards, there's email correspondence that he shows her between the leader of that mercenary group who managed to get away and the email went to Gianni's email account. And it essentially was telling him that there was a big fuck up and everything went to shit. And during this whole big reveal, it's brought to light that Gianni is the one that hired the kidnappers and that they were hoping that either Lily could be ransomed for money that, that Spider would offer to pay. And then because Gianni has Lily, he would get his daughter back and the money would go to him. Or during the break-in, Raina herself would be killed. And Gianni being the sole beneficiary of her life insurance policy and all of her, all of her estate would inherit all of Enzo's money. So she, this is revealed to her and she's, she, she takes it like a champ, to be honest. Her and Gianni were never close. She was always treated like property by him. They never had a loving brother-sister relationship. So when she looks at Declan and says, I need to talk to my brother, and he says, that's not possible. And she says, why? And he says, because he's dead. She doesn't blink. And he shows her another video of one of the four, one of the heads of one of the four families and basically torturing Gianni, who's tied to a chair, where he admits to all of the shit that he's done, stealing from the other four families and hiring the mercenaries, everything. And then right before the guy, the guy puts a bullet in his head, Declan turns the video off and she sits there resigned and Declan says, the four families have come to a vote and she's like I thought the vote was postponed because they couldn't find Gianni and he's like no that's just something that that they told that they were telling gonna tell Gianni because they had already made their decision that they did not want him he wasn't welcome there and she's like so who did they vote for and he says, you. 
they want you to be the head, the capo for the five families. And she's like, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Say what now? Um, for the first time in the history of ever, the five families, the five families of the, of the Cosa Nostra in New York want a woman to be in charge of their organization. Beg your pardon? So she's, she's like, uh, what? And Declan's like, the vote was split. There was one holdout this the guy who was who was friends with Enzo and knew what he was doing to Reina the entire time they were married and he's a bastard piece of shit and he's gonna get his we know he is um but the other the other four or the other three voted her in and she takes her place and her and Quinn spider her and spider um, live happily ever after. <laughs> and there's a little fast forward scene where she takes a girl's trip to Paris with Sloan, Nat, and Riley. And on this girl's trip, when she goes to take, to take a bathroom break at a, at a um, like an after party at a fashion show in a restaurant. She goes to the bathroom and when she comes back out, her bodyguards that were in the hallway are knocked out and in their place is standing a man, a man with an Irish accent. And he tells her that he is the leader of an organization, a secret organization my baby, uh, the leader of a secret organization called the 13. And he wants to recruit her to become a member of his organization. They have a very funny back and forth banter where she basically slams him over and over with sassy comments and he laughs her off. And he's like, you'll be hearing from me because at the end of the day, Whatever image you project, you're a do-gooder. And I like that. And he disappears. She turns her head to look the other way. And when she looks back, he's gone. And he just leaves behind a card that says the, the, says the, the 13. And then there's an epilogue that has Reyna, who is now pregnant with Spider's baby. Um, sitting at the head of a giant conference table with a bunch of men who represent the crime syndicates from all over. Not just the Cosa Nostra, but the Triad and the Bratva and all over. And she's having a giant meeting where she has organized um, essentially dealings between the heads of all of their organizations for deals that mutually benefit everyone. And she somehow managed to get all of them to work together under her leadership because she's a boss bitch. And she does this while pregnant. And then afterwards they go to Declan and Sloan's house for Christmas dinner where Sloan reveals that she's also pregnant. I just scared the shit out of Freckles, sorry. <laughs> I got excited. Um, and the end. So there. Um, for the rating for the book, um, I would give it a solid, I think, um, I think I would give it a solid, let's give it a solid 9.25. Yeah, I think I'd give it nine, a 9.25. Because uh, Spider, Spider's, oh God, he was so vulnerable and so endearing. And I love, I love vulnerable dudes. 
I love, don't get me wrong, I love alpha dudes and I love like villainous anti-heroes, but there's just something about like a nice, vulnerable, needy guy. <laughs> not like, not like creepy, clingy, needy, but like heart-wrenching, needy. Um, so yeah that's that's that um there was this the standout star of this entire book to be honest was none of the characters that I've mentioned the standout star of this book was Raina's mom <laughs> that bitch was crazy Raina's mother was legit insane in the most hilarious way this woman this woman is like she's a she's a wino number one she's during the whole like break in into the house she's sitting in the kitchen at the table drinking wine and spider comes in and he's like we've got to get get down there's bullets flying everywhere and she's just like he he's like i we have to go find reina and she's just like i'm good where i'm at the wine is here just turn off the light when you leave so they can't see me it's it'll it's it'll be too dark it'll be too dark in here for them to see me he, and she's just like turn off the light when you go She's crazy and she's like hitting on the the fucking bellboys and stuff at the hotel <laughs> she was a legit nut job but in the funniest way and I fucking adored her and she was legit she was definitely the standout star of this book now here's my beef my one beef, if I had a beef with this book, was the fact that Kieran, my baby boo Kieran, who is Spider's next in command and like his driver slash bodyguard person, Kieran has been around since the beginning of this series, roughly the beginning of this series. He is the only main, he is the only side male character who, who did not get his own book. She gave him an HEA in a way. He met a nice Italian girl from Raina's family at their wedding and they started dating and she mentions that he's obsessed with this girl and blah, blah, blah. Cool. But no. I did not like the fact that he did not get his own book. I felt like he was the only one left who, he was the only one left. You didn't have one more in you, JT? One more? You couldn't just do, you couldn't give me one more? I'm sorry, but I needed Kieran's book. And I felt like the HEA that he got was, was subpar, I'm sorry to say. But anyways, um, I'm salty about that. Other than that, the book was fucking fantastic. And it was the perfect end to the series. The fact that my baby Killian showed up, <sighs> my baby, I fucking love that man. I fucking love that man so much. He's literally my favorite. He's my favorite. Um, the fact that he showed up, I, I was just like, yes, oh my God, I've missed you so much, baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. 
uh, 55 minutes. I told you it's going to be an hour. What did I tell you? I knew it. Um, I thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm not sure what the next, or my next video will be. Probably a review of some kind, but we'll see. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching again, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Hi, my little babies. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell so you get notifications when I upload a new video. If you'd like, you can also follow me on social media. I do have a members only Facebook group an Instagram and a Twitter devoted to this channel. I will link them all in the description box below and I'll put a little banner here on the screen for you guys to see. And now stay tuned for the doof bloops. Okay, let's autofocus and let's get started, shall we? Shall we? Hi. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's get into it because this book, this book, I have one, I have one beef with this book. Just one beef, but we're gonna get into it. Let's just get started. Let's jump, let's dive right in because we're gonna make this fast today. Okay. This is the last and final book in J.T. Geisinger's Monsters and Queens and Monsters. If you have a Kindle Unlimited subscri subscription, subscription, <sighs> you fucking turd. If you have a if, so I don't know where he lives. Do you hear the fucking airplane? Can you go away, please, so I can finish recording? Thank you. Um, I don't know where he lives. So he he may very well be Irish, but his Irish accent when... Are you gonna drop the bomb or not? Forever young, I wanna be forever young. Do you really want to live forever? Never, never, forever young. I want to be forever young. That's literally the only part of the song I, that I know. That one little, like, chorus verse, whatever. And I can just sing it in circles. So. <laughs> What's wrong with you? A lot. Okay, so what's next? What else we got? I'm not doing a review for God of Malice because um, TBH, I don't think I liked it. Sorry, Rena. Don't know what to tell you. Um, Nikki, we'll see. Nikki St. Crow. I should probably do that one, shouldn't I? I don't even remember what this damn book was about. Let's see what happens. I love you. What's wrong with you? A lot. 